What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. videos man um continue to stay on um, putting that work in man continue to stay on that grind hard work and dedication is the only way you know what i'm saying these shortcuts and easy success sometimes it's not the best way to go at it gang because fast fast money is not it's fast money all money is not good money and fast money is not good money all the time you know what i'm saying sometimes it takes patience to make the well open up to make the well flow gang so i hope y'all enjoyed this video come to us a hip hop in the light man uh, make sure y'all like and subscribe, and let's get into this bitch. All right, boom. Today, two motherfucking day. Straight here, outside Big Crip and uh, dang, ooh, not side shit, man. So, man, this shit is wild. You know what I'm saying? We've been talking about this shit for a good, good, good minute. You know what I'm saying? This dude right here used to be one of my favorite um sinners. You know what I'm saying? Uh, especially when he came to the Lakers, man. Dwight Howard. How do I feel about the allegations? I feel no type of way. It, it, I already don't get no fucks. As long as this nigga not doing it to me. You know what I'm saying? Or And not really trying to fuck with the people that I'm, I'm around. Hey, here's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I prayers out to the people that went through this traumatic ass incidents. I hope they get what they looking for. I, hopefully it's not no... Jail time for the white, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, man, these motherfucking people gotta understand, man. No me no. You know what I'm saying? You can't rape no nigga if you gay ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? You can't rape niggas these days. Well, I mean any day, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's like I said, man. It's nothing wrong with gay people. What the problem is is these faggots who try to force that shit on you. You know what I'm saying? Gay people, they cool. You know what I'm saying? They they mind their business. They fuck with they gay people. They person they talking to. They chilling. They mind their fucking business. They own their own shit. They that they them. It's these faggots. These ones you gotta worry about. These ones who try to try to rape you and and drug you and try to you know what I'm saying? Do all type of forceful ass shit on your on you and try to get you caught lacking. You know what I'm saying? Because you can change, you can make a whole fucking like system, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Go against you, you know, you know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers be getting all these damn rights, man. You know what I'm saying? Every fucking single right in the motherfucking book. You know what I'm saying? They get every motherfucking rights, you know what I'm saying? And then when they do something against against the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying, motherfuckers don't really talk about it. But us straight people gotta speak up, you know what I'm saying, about these situations, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, like I said, man, what he does behind his closed door is him. But once it starts going to the, the all this shit, like you know, niggas gonna talk about it. It's just un, the undiable, the, the truth. Niggas gonna talk about it. I always gonna talk about it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we just wanna understand, like you know, niggas do. I understand it a little bit, but it's like, damn, you know, when you get a lot of money on and power, nigga, you start acting crazy. You feel like you can almost do any fucking thing and get away with it. You feel what I'm saying? Because you have the bread to do so. You can pay hush hush money. You can even pay niggas to try to handle your business for you. You know what I'm saying? But you never want to get caught in that type of delusion that your money on can protect you all the damn time because it only takes one move for somebody to make you fail. It don't matter who the fuck it is, nigga. You can, a whole empire, you can, you, can, you can lose a whole empire over one bitch. So you can lose a whole empire with a, with a couple of few niggas. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, man, we're going to talk about this Dwight Howard shit. Because Dwight Howard, he wants to make a comeback. 
to the uh, NBA. Is his career over with? And, that, and that's what we're going to talk about, man. So let's get into this video. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. And let's like, subscribe, and share. And sh shout out to all the people in this video, man. I appreciate for all y'all um, in this video. And yeah, we out this bitch. Let's get into it. Hey man, say man, the White Howard, bro. The White Howard been trying to come All back, right. man. Big Homie dot CC. Yes, sir. What's the word, bro? How you living? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm glad to be here, man. Man, that's what's up. I'm glad to have you, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate so, it. For sure, for sure, man. So, for everybody who might not know who you are, man, they kind of give tagging out the damn can name. Shout out to Cam Capone, man. It's your boy BH, man. You know, celebrity bodyguard, rapper entrepreneur you know what i'm saying like a lot of celebrity stars i'm the person they call when they get when they get treacherous you feel me like when they can't call like a normal security they got to call somebody who got reach in the street they got to call somebody who can you know when they got the uh they got a female passed out in the hotel room and the police on their ass they got to call me you know what i'm saying people trying to kill them getting extorted they got to call me that's why I charge a fee, you know what I'm saying? The truth, the truth, the facts. That's what it is. Well, um, the biggest news going on right now is Diddy. Yes, sir. What, what are your thoughts on Diddy? Have you ever worked with Diddy? Have you ever met Diddy? I met him a couple times. I definitely worked with him. But the, everything everybody said, I've been saying it for years, bro. I've been saying it for years, like, man, these boys are weird. You feel me? Like, you would go to a party with them. He looking around like, damn, like. You need to come out the woodwork. A lot of guys too. kissing each other in here, man. You feel me? What y'all do is y'all business. So you've you been to a party and seen this? Oh, I've seen it firsthand, multiple times. Man. I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress, bro. What? I've seen Dwight what Howard the in a pink fuck? dress with two other trans ladies in dresses. They all the same height. Not surprising. At a party. Oh. Ask about the White Howard in Mexico. What's up with the White Howard in Mexico? You know they don't got paparazzi out there like that. You feel me? They was down there hooping. He going to the club with these same trap ladies. Nobody saying nothing. That's why he's not in the league right now. You heard about him catching the sexual assault on the little designer yep. dude? Yeah. Right. Him. Imagine you got two seven foot tall swole guys in dresses, corner you in a hotel in a bedroom. You finna be scared. Facts. So like, damn. I I distinctly remember. Damn, ain't nothing but muscle, Paul. Going to a Diddy party, all the waitresses topless. They serving you, everybody topless. You feel me? Like he got uh, dancers in cages, people walking around with lions on le tigers on leashes. I seen this with my own two eyes. You see what I'm saying? And it was getting so weird in the party. I'm like, man. Hmm. I tell the security team I'm working with, like, but let me sit outside in the, in the Escalade. So I go outside in the Escalade and I'm just chilling out there because, you know, bro, I got a reputation to maintain, bro. Outstanding member. Like, I don't want nobody thinking that, man, they got what, BH with this. That was always <laughs> a concern for me, bro. Crazy. That was always a concern. I've seen it for myself because. Bobby Valentino was the person I was bodyguarding there. You see what I'm saying? He tell me I didn't got so much pussy before. You know, pussy don't even really excite me. I'm like, well, what you mean? But he there. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> On bro, fourth grade. I said, like, what you mean? So he got two girls with him. So I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, hold on. These might not be normal girls. Sure enough. Now, he say, man, take my girl to the bathroom. To the man's or the woman? Okay. We walk into the bathroom. You feel me? She go into the men's bathroom. But that's that's not all the way crazy because it's one bathroom packed. You feel me? People might do that. You know what I'm saying? So. Is he still standing? The door, so I step inside the bathroom, though. She's standing at the urinal. Damn! <laughs> Okay, that's Shout out to Cam Capone with the good Hey, good videos, man Alright So, you know 
I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell everybody this. If you at a celebrity party and the white guys come in like they was on Twilight, look like vampires, they holding their drink like this, you feel me with the blonde hair and stuff like that? It's finna get crazy in the party. Oh you know? shit! Seen it too many times. Oh shit! When the white guys come in like they was on a vampire movie, bro. Hella jail, spikes sticking up. Can't trust no white dude. dude. Yeah, somebody finna get their cakes touched on, bro. What's up? This is Damn. Cam. Shout out to JJ Reddick. Assistant calling out. One is Dwight. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious. I don't trust Shaq. I don't, why, you know what I'm saying? Shaq on some weird stuff. Shut up, shut up calling out. But I just feel like that there are certain when he went at times Kanye, where he said some weird shit. Uh, so his words be invalid a lot of times. Be like out of the blue, and you'll you'll call him out. In basketball, we don't talk about it. That I think you've done a couple. Culture, we ain't talking about. I'm not saying you don't have the right to call people out. I, I just feel like even going back to when I played with Dwight, it feels like there's this like uh, it's not, rivalry's not the right word. I know I got to be careful about the words I use in front of you. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, how long have you known me? Uh, I met you and I met you in 2006. Yeah. I've always been a nice guy to you. Been a great guy to me. Just to have a nice guy. Yeah. You are so nice so to Kanye. Like most of the times when I say certain things. Uh, yeah. You look, sound like a coon that like time. I ain't gonna care. If you're not sensitive, you can't handle it. Okay. Here's your answer. You gotta understand about me. When I'm serious, the world won't know. It'll just be me and you. Oh, interesting. You see what I'm saying? I... I have to like you to be able to say something about you. I mean, you're seven foot tall. I actually like the way. I am the current president of the Big Man Alliance. I like all big men who have the opportunity to overthrow me. And sometimes I will add fuel to the fire to see what type of people they are. And if I say something and you respond and you respond sensitively, that shows me you don't have it. Okay. And a lot of times I just be playing. So am I serious when I talk about these guys? No, it's fun. I'm a fun guy. Yeah. Because again, when it's serious, you'll know it's serious because it'll be something else added to that article. So, and, and then and then when I do call these guys out, I try to keep it as factual as possible. Like when I was critiquing Ben Simmons, and I, I throw this word out a lot, and you have this badge. It's a G14 classification badge. For example, if... If I'm trying to shoot a jumper and I'm scoring a lot of points, but my form is, is not like it should be, you have G14 classification as a shooter to say, Shaq, tuck your elbow in, follow through, leave it up. So I think I, when it comes to being a big guy or NBA player or great, I have G14 classic, classification to say certain things. A lot of times if I am, am getting personal, my panel will say, getting a little too personal so I just try to keep it a lot of factual so it all started with the way when I said in these average 28 10 you want to be dominant you want to call yourself Superman I know this for a fact 28 10 when you get to the playoffs add five to your PPG and that's how you become a dominant big man so a lot of times when I say some people get sensitive and if you get sensitive I mean he's smart with the basketball game you know what I'm saying he's smart on that nothing thing. personal with me this but you social world shit, he needs to set the fuck up which on. I've heard you talk about before, and I've always found it very fascinating. So, something came up recently where uh, Perk said something about you guys not watching games, and and you guys had a, a whole response to it. But the, the 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 part that kind of stood out to me, and I wanted to like ask you about this because I, I like I'm genuinely curious about this because I am not a Hall of Famer. I'm not a Hall of Fame basketball player. I was never an All Star. Never an All NBA guy. Um, and it, I don't know whether it was you or Charles, but you were like, you know, he's talking about two Hall of Famers, right? I, I, I'm just curious, like, when you are in that seat, not even just at TNT, but when you are in that seat of being a Hall of Famer, of being an all-time great, like, what is your tolerance level for people critiquing you? I think... You always get critiqued. Well... As a player, I think a lot of players get mad at a lot of people. You talk up here, mm. but you play down here. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like when Charles talks about championships, I, I ask him, how do you know? How do you know? Yeah. What, you, you went to one, two? How do you know? So when certain people talk, 
You know, it's, it's like like you you talk about, ah, 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 but you didn't apply it to your game. So are you believable? And that's why some guys get mad when certain people say that. He's a champion in so his own type of way, though. Just because he didn't make no champ, don't mean he got he, like he can't Joel talk on experiences. Double team. You know what I'm saying? Might not be 100 like, percent on championship, but he can still talk about it. The, fuck? the number one pick and have it. Like I know I can I can talk about this. Other guys that that, that don't have that experience, you can't talk. You know what it's like to be. They can talk player. about it. You know what it's but like. They, but they but they might not be 100 percent right, but they can talk about it. You know what it's like coming off that screen full speed. You were regimented. Y'all know what it's like. So I think. People have problems with us is when they look at you and say, "Okay, you, you, you were there." Just because you, you won, like I mean, you had all the knowledge. See, I can talk. You don't mean like you don't be right all the time. You can talk like you're there. Your partner LeBron can talk like, but certain people. So it's not about critiquing. It's like, what are you talking about? Like you, you, you're under me. So for you to say and sit, I don't watch. Still guys, don't mean that you can't get critiqued. critiques. In it, man. I, this, I this, always this, say you get critiqued by a homeless person, like a hobo, so nigga. So critique you, you nigga. You can have shit, nigga. You can critique you, nigga. Coming out with a mixtape. I don't. I don't get sensitive and whine and do all that. You say shit like it, but again, it ain't nothing personal. Like I don't. I'm 50 years old. I ain't trying to do all that. But you say something. I'm gonna say something, and it's all part of the ecosystem of this thing we call marketing. It's all fun and games, but again, I think yeah. regular people get upset when when they hear people. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm like, like if I can question, do you, how do you, know? do you view me, me as a regular person? Because I, I mean, in, the, no, in, the, in terms have, of the NBA history, I'm a very regular player. No, but you have G14 classification in certain areas. You are you are one of the best shooters in NBA history. So you can talk about shooting. You can even talk about playing. You can even talk about certain pressures of being a shooter. I respect you for that. But once you start talking about dominant big man and big, I'm gonna be like, ah, <laughs> dude, ah. I gave you all the love possible on your I, podcast. I, you did, but I'm, I'm just saying. So like, if I and then you know, even with me, like I, you don't hear me talking about people's free throws, <laughs> right? You just don't, and you will never. Like that's, I don't have like I, I can't I can't say oh Tucky a bit you need no shut the hell up so. I, mean, but I want to. I want to ask you about the free throws. I do have a. I do have a question about because you, you referenced the thing with uh, with Chuck and the championships or whatever, and and I I came in the NBA in, in 2006 and played in the finals in 09. That was uh, Kobe. Kobe won that year with Powell. They won again the next year. Y'all lost um, in the finals. What? Y'all lost in the finals. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Orlando's never won a championship. 0-2 in the finals. You know about that? <laughs> yeah, I do know about that. <laughs> At, at least, least, at least we got a game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at least we got yeah, a game. Uh, I said it first, so you couldn't say it. <laughs> but it, now that now that I've like lived in this in this media world, I'm uh, you know I lived through it as a player, particularly with some of my peers. Chris Paul comes to mind. Like the whole discourse and conversation about rings and championships and, and the culture around that. Um, did that exist in the '90s when you yes, played? It did. did you feel the pressure of that? Particularly, I, I would yes, assume, particularly when you went to LA. I did. And me and Kareem talk about this. So the stuff I'm doing to Dwight, they did to me. Thought it was a, I thought it was like a right of place. No, Kareem and Wilt. Oh wow! I'm in a restaurant one time. Wilt's right there. He didn't say nothing to me. So when I first got to LA, I was putting up big numbers, but we were getting swept. So they asked Kareem. Said, "Man, Shaq's, he'll be a Laker great, boom, boom, boom." And Kareem stops the guy and says, "Is he really that great? They get swept all the time, and they haven't won a championship." Now, I want to go off, but that's Cap. He has G14 classification. So I got to suck it up and take it like a man. And say, hey, but, but me being the type of person I am, I'm going to make you shut up, Kareem. I can't say nothing to you now because you're absolutely correct. Yeah, Shaq's putting up good numbers, but if his team got swept six times, is he really a great player? I got to eat that, so now I got to now I gotta turn up. And then, you know, you win one. Oh, bitch can't win another one. Then you win two. Oh, you know, you know the other Lakers didn't three people. And then, and then you win another one, and then you start to get the respect. But, you know, so the stuff that I'm doing is the stuff that was done to me. But if you're the right type of person with the right type of mentality, it should be used as motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's how I see it. I mean... Shaq be talking some real sometimes, you know what I'm saying? When it's come to basketball. And... Bro, I don't know what the fuck is going on. They talking to the motherfucking la- sign language, bitch. Stephen Curry, si Andre Blatch. Pahiya ang mga haters. 
strong group Shout versus out, home net men ng Lebanon. Medyo malakas itong nakalaban ng ating mga kababayan. First quarter, may defense si Kevin Kiambao back to back field goals para simulan ng first quarter. Three-pointer at itong follow-up dunk sa block shot kay Andre Robertson. Dwight Howard nasubukan ng lakas sa paint. Two-point layup for the Superman. Kumana ang okay, mga no, import itong Lebanese team. Look at how he play for the... Oh, uh, motherfucking Buccaneers, right? Buccaneers. Those team passes simula. Nakakasabay ang mga pambato book, natin. Nigga. Hanggang sa nangyari ng hangyabangan. At si Dwight Howard, pinag-aangasan itong import ng kalaban na si Dwayne Jackson. Nagala Lebron pa sa pag-aasar itong si Jackson sa mga Pinoy fans dahil sa pagbuo ng crowd. Mukhang napiko na rin itong si Dwight Howard okay, at pinipigyan na ng pera sa si Jackson. In fairness, dito sa Lebanese team, maganda ang ball movement. Kaya nalamangan ng strong group PH. Ito pa, call. Dwight Howard, siniko na si Jackson dahil masyadong gigil sa pagdepensa. Ang prayer na to, kinukuyog sa ilalim ang big man natin. May dunk sa opening quarter si Dwight Howard at nanguna with 8 points. Dahil sa late run ng home net men, nakakalamang sila ng 7 points strong group 24 to 17. Simula ng second quarter, nakakaramdam na ng pandaraya ang mga Pilipino. Pumapabor ang tawagan sa kalaban. Nagbubulag-bulagan yata ang mga referee. Nagminera ng ating mga pambato. Eto, klarong-klaro, out of bounds. Pero sa kanila pa rin ang bola. Si Zach Lofton ito, mga okay, idol, kinukipot like ng Meralco sa EASL at nagtala ng 54 points last month. Tumabla sa 24 ang talaan, mga idol, dahil kay K Q bago muling nag-run ang home net men. Bumalik sa laro si Dwight Howard at nakabawi na siya kay Jackson. Block shot. At siya naman ang pinag-aasar ng mga Pinoy. Well, agad namang pinatahimik ang crowd sa isang baseline dunk. Andre Blatch, three-pointer and another block for Dwight Howard kay Jackson pa rin. Total of five block shots for Howard sa first half. Nag-showtime na ang kalaban, dalawang import ng kumaka na, si Lofton at Jackson, na mekos-mekos na ang depensa na ating mga pambato. To beat the buzzer, Dwayne Jackson, deep three-pointer at nag-shimmy-shimmy pa. Dito lalo pa siyang pinag-aasar ng mga Pinoy at bumawi din ang pang-aasar sa crowd. Pabalik ng dugout, 48-42, nag-ahabol ang strong group, 16 points for Dwight Howard. To start the second half, Dwayne Jackson, three-pointer at may pasheli pa. That was the most English I heard out that nigga right now. Good thing mga idol, maraming free throws ang naibigay sa atin at lahat naman nagsisipasok. 8 of 9 sa free throw si Dwight Howard. Halfway finally, lumamang na rin ang strong group PH at dito na nagsihiyaw at ang crowd. Matahad up. Okay. Kahit gumawa ng impressive run ng strong group, nakasagot pa naman ng Lebanese club at naibaba sa apat ang lamang ng ating mga kababayan. 71 to 67. May dump pa si Justin Baltasar at may gumulong mga idol ng sagasaan ni Andre Robertson, itong defender niya. 26 points for Dwight Howard. Fourth quarter, mas nalo pang naging intense ang laban. Bumalik mga idol sa Lebanese club ang kalamangan. Sumagot ng three-pointer si Andre Blatch. Second field goal mga idol ni Kuya Dre Dre. Pabilis ang bawi ng home net men, 75-74. Hindi pa tapos si Andre Blatch. Back-to-back three-pointers, kaya muling lumamang ang strong group. Parang bumalik na yung dating shooting mga idol ni Kuya Andre. Yun nga lang, yung second three-pointer niya counted as two. Kaya nagreklamo ang mga Pinoy fans. Sabi, three-pointer yun. After timeout, hindi pa tapos si Andre Blatch. Another three-pointer. Pinatahimik ni Andre Blatch. Ang mga haters na nagsabi, dapat hindi na sinama. Dahil sa laki ng channel. Down the stretch, finish na. Pang-anim na tres, mga idol ni Andre Blatch. But it's the best dance by the young thing. We fans. Last two minutes, tuluyang natambakan mga idol ang home okay, net white. men. At dito na, nagsihiyawan ng mga Pinoy crowd, uwi na! Uwi na talaga dahil sinayuhan na ni Mackenzie Moore ang panalo and play. one top shot. Umahabol pa ng dunk si Kevin Kiambao sa huli. Panalo mga idol ang strong group. Third straight win. Damn, turn up.
But this is wild. He takes me back to his hotel room, and we don't even have sex. He just makes me eat his ass. The fuck, nigga? I ain't and know I touch a nigga ass. Great. So he has to leave in the morning. He says, you can sleep over with me. That's awesome. That's great. I sleep over with him. And then um, he wakes up in the morning. He's going to leave. He's like, you can like check out as an until later. Like You can use the hotel room. Enjoy yourself. Do room service. Ain't no bit in a nigga. Ain't my bathroom, ass. The fuck, nigga? And I turn on the light. I look in the mirror. Field is the best center in he the NBA, pink a dominant force on both ends of the court, a champion and a fan favorite. But behind the scenes, he was hiding a dark secret that would soon come to light and shatter his image. That's a shocking nasty. lawsuit, a stunning confession. This is the story of Dwight Howard, the basketball legend who became the center of controversy. Dwight Howard's journey through the hallowed courts of the National Basketball Association, NBA, has been a symphony of triumphs, career-defining moments, and, at times, controversies. As an eight-time NBA All-Star and a thrice-anointed recipient of the coveted Defensive Player of the Year Award, Howard's presence in the league was not just influential, but enduring. His illustrious career saw him don the jerseys of seven different franchises, with standout stints at the Orlando Magic and a triumphant championship with the Los Angeles Lakers during the tumultuous 2019-20 season. Nevertheless, Howard's journey was far from a seamless ascent. He garnered a reputation for being a potentially disruptive locker room presence, never tethering himself to one team for more than a single season during the latter part of his NBA tenure. As the twilight of his NBA career dawned, Howard embarked on an expedition to the Taiwanese Professional Basketball League during the 2022-2023 season. The heart of the Dwight Howard controversy revolves around a civil lawsuit filed by Stephen Harper, which accuses Dwight Howard of sexual assault. This lawsuit serves as the epicenter of a contentious Damn. legal battle that has garnered widespread attention and raised significant questions yeah, then about what do with his wood and his and the intricacies nigga. of pursuing justice. Stephen Harper's lawsuit alleges that he was sexually assaulted by Dwight Howard during an encounter in Howard's Georgia residence in July 2021. The allegations are not limited to a mere breach of consent, but extend to claims of forced participation in sexual activity against Harper's will. The lawsuit paints a grim picture of Harper feeling trapped and threatened during the alleged incident, citing imminent bodily harm. That's it, wow. Howard's advances. These harrowing allegations form the core of the legal battle. An integral part of Harper's case are explicit text messages exchanged between Harper and Howard. These digital communications provide a crucial backdrop to the encounter, with Harper alleging that they played a role in the lead up to their meeting. It underscores the significance of digital evidence in cases of this nature, where consent and communication are central issues. One of the most noteworthy aspects of this legal battle is the delay in reporting the alleged assault. Stephen Harper reported the incident to Gwinnett County Police nearly a year after the encounter occurred. This delay raises complex questions about the legal process, the psychological impact on the survivor, Damn, the and the challenges that individuals often face when coming forward with allegations of this nature. Following the initial report, Gwinnett County Police attempted to schedule a formal interview with Harper. However, due to a lack of participation from the alleged victim, as it raises questions about the feasibility of pursuing justice after a significant delay and the challenges faced by survivors in navigating the legal system. The legal battle, at its core, presents divergent narratives. Stephen Harper, as the plaintiff, emphasizes the non-consensual nature of the encounter and the trauma he experienced. In stark contrast, Dwight Howard and his legal team vehemently deny the allegations, asserting that the encounter was consensual. This stark difference in perspectives has laid the foundation for a contentious legal battle with significant implications. In response to these serious allegations, Dwight Howard and his legal team <laughs> assert a narrative Howard. that starkly contrasts with Harper's claims. Howard maintains that the encounter in 2021 at his Georgia residence was a consensual one, a perspective Boy, at odds boot. with the grave accusations made against him. The case's complexity deepens as Howard seeks a summary judgment, advocating for the dismissal of the lawsuit while requesting the imposition of court costs and attorney fees on Harper. Amid the legal imbroglio, rumors and speculations have emerged, hinting at Dwight Howard's potential involvement in secretive Hollywood soirees. These Damn events are with often Diddy. associated with high-profile celebrities like Diddy and Will Smith. These Damn, unverified Will claims Smith. introduce an element of intrigue, further shrouding Howard's situation in an enigmatic Damn. veil and amplifying questions about his participation in activities beyond the hardwood. A Respected figure uh, in the realm of sports journalism, ass. Stephen A. Smith ventured into the discussion surrounding the Dwight Howard case through his podcast, drawing parallels between Howard's predicament.
Durant and the infamous case of former LA Clippers owner Donald Sterling, who faced a lifetime NBA ban due to racial comments. Smith underscores the sensitivity and intricacy of cases involving allegations of sexual assault. Smith acknowledged that, under different circumstances, Dwight Howard's acknowledgement of his sexual orientation could have garnered overwhelming support from various communities. However, the presence of sexual assault allegations cast a shadow over this facet of his revelation, rendering it relatively obscure in the midst of the legal battle's tumult. Dwight Howard's odyssey through the NBA took an unforeseen trajectory as he found himself on the periphery of the league. His attempts at an NBA return encountered challenges, I including an unsuccessful the workout with the Golden State Warriors. The allegations and the ensuing legal battle have undeniably influenced his standing within the basketball community. While Howard is yet to face criminal charges, questions loom large regarding the effect these allegations will have on his career, particularly as he approaches the twilight of his professional life. His exclusion from the NBA, despite his undeniable basketball prowess, raises broader questions about how the league addresses controversies and manages public perception. Dwight Howard's inadvertent disclosure of his non-heterosexual preferences during the legal battle represents a pivotal moment in the athlete's life, evoking public interest and debate. Speculation about Howard's sexual orientation had been swirling for over a decade. However, well, the, back the NBA in, my guy. star, who hails from a deeply religious and conservative background, had compelling reasons to keep this facet of his life private. The South's traditional expectations for professional athletes, combined with the layers of scrutiny and judgment linked to Howard's faith and family upbringing, made it a challenging and delicate matter. This disclosure sets itself apart from those of other LGBTQ plus athletes who have often chosen to come out willingly and proudly. In contrast, Howard's revelation was entirely unintentional and emerged within the intricate context of an ongoing legal case. In typical cases, openly LGBTQ plus athletes are celebrated for their courage and honesty, contributing to a more inclusive sports culture. What further complicates Howard's disclosure is the fact that it was brought to light in response to allegations against him, creating a multifaceted narrative. While Howard acknowledged consensual sexual activity with another man, it became inextricably linked with allegations of non-consensual actions. This unique situation thrust an athlete's private life and potential non-heterosexual orientation into the public sphere during a turbulent legal battle. It's essential to recognize that under different circumstances, Dwight Howard's disclosure would likely have been a significant moment for LGBTQ for representation in the sports world. Yet, the legal context and surrounding allegations have largely overshadowed it, with many remaining silent. This outcome raises questions about the broader dynamics of coming out and disclosure within the realm of professional sports. To summarize, Dwight Howard's sexual orientation disclosure is a multifaceted issue, encompassing historical speculation, the challenges of unintentional disclosure, and the intertwining of personal lives, legal proceedings, and public perceptions. It underscores the unique obstacles faced by LGBTQ athletes in the professional sports landscape, casting light on the intricacies of private lives exposed under legal scrutiny. Surprisingly, Dwight Howard's acknowledgement of his sexual orientation did not receive the attention one might anticipate. This revelation, often a watershed moment for athletes, coincided with a legal battle that attracted significant public attention, potentially diminishing the impact of his disclosure. The relative lack of fanfare surrounding Howard's statement suggests that the intricate background of sexual assault allegations overshadowed this aspect of his personal revelation. This raises questions about how society navigates personal privacy, the complexities of public scrutiny, and the responsibilities that public figures bear. The Dwight Howard controversy epitomizes the intricate interplay between a legal battle, professional consequences, and personal revelations. As the legal process continues to unfold, the future of Dwight Howard's career remains shrouded in uncertainty. Simultaneously, his revelations have propelled into the spotlight the public's evolving perspective on athletes and their private lives. This story encompasses broader questions about how society navigates personal privacy, public scrutiny, and the weighty responsibilities that public figures shoulder. The saga of Dwight Howard, with its amalgamation of allegations, career impacts, and personal revelations, serves as a complex narrative that transcends the boundaries of sports and reverberates within the wider societal context. Gang, this shit right here is wild. Read this. Yeah, all right then. Be back. Dwight Howard respond back to the haters, saying whatever happened in my bedroom is my business. He got caught with the Badoosie. That's, you know what I mean? that's a lot of business. The what I'm doing in my bedroom is my damn business. And we got Young Miami responding back to the haters. I don't think we should have won. Oh. Oh. I love that you paid I that. I don't say y'all deserve it. You say you was Saudi. 
Indianapolis. Well, I mean, I don't know. BET. Let's you got, see. We, I hate to. Let's do. talk about that. Casanet is in jail. Lucy. You no, know, I DM'd him. I said, "Does your brother, your family know?" I didn't know how close he was with his family at that at that time. You know, I never, we never talked about that. And I asked him, like, "Does your family know that you like date?" You know. Yo, it's Damn. up to you. Yes, yo. Six Eleven, Dwight Howard, coming at you for the business. <laughs> No, son, why do you think she's not in the NBA? I think just like Stephen A. Smith was saying, it's because Bro. NBA th knew the losses was, was going to come, son. Hey, man, look, is it allegations? We'll throw some allegations out there. Let's do our due diligence on that first. So he got to admit it. Anytime you got Dwight Howard on some freak boy, he starts sending devil emojis, okay? So the dude says, what's up, sexy? <laughs> what you doing? The dude says, I was helping my sister cook. But just now chilling right now. What you doing, babe? Then Dwight Howard says, I'm just thinking about that meat. Oh my I know. goodness. You gotta admit it. No, really. There's, son, there's audio He's out there him. him talking to um Nut Kitty. Whoa, so listen to the story. Do you know the I story? Bring it, bring it down for the Cloud Baby is the most disgusted. I should not be talking about that, but I'm doing it for you. I hey, did man. it for research He's purposes. Sure Let him do what he gotta do. <laughs> Stephen Harper being sued by Stephen Harper, a man who allegedly slid into Howard's DMs. Per the alleged mistress, Howard invited Harper to his home late at night on July 19th, 2021. And when he arrived, Harper said, hey, I'm not gay. Gay. Hey, I'm a little and freaky. Yes, I'm so good you're gay. And it was at this point that Harper asked to leave the home, but That's he said man. that Howard then convinced him to stay. And it was then that things turned into a non consensual situation. The nigga with the wig. Oh, hold up, bro. Hold Hold on, hold on. So hold he on, showed up. There was a nigga in the wind. Hey, 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 yeah, hey, son. Hey, you about to get us kicked off. No, 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 no. no. It's true. No, no, YouTube we understood. Need to we just getting advertisers. We okay. Just, just There's going to be a lot of beef. Just, we That's just got out. We just got up on this <laughs> advertiser stuff. So I just got to hold on. Keep it real. Hey, Bud Light, Shout out to y'all niggas, though. Keep come it out real. With, with a, and re, just because Bud Light came out and did a switch with Sean Strickland in the UFC and decided to go back to business. We back drinking Bud Light. Don't tell me that you about cheers. to go off and right now. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. 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 We're not sponsored. Make, so, guys, I'm on my way training. And I just found out Bud Light's a new sponsor. And goddamn, I applaud you guys. I am so fucking proud of you guys for doing the right things after that. You know how I feel about transgenders. I go fucking hard. This is what I do. I'm the biggest advocate of biological females. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, John, man. John Strickland's trying to make it mm -hmm. great again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? But, but you better hold your horses. Because mm -hmm. we, we got to play it safe. We just got it. We, we just, just got, got it. it. And Bud Light's not sponsoring us. That's just, that's that's definitely true. That's Ooh. definitely true. But Cloud Baby's back back to the BS. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. That being said, go I got to thread lightly. Yeah. Thread lightly. Very. Yes. So Dwight Howard now respond to all the haters saying like, yo, whatever happened in the bedroom? Yeah. Son. Yeah. It's in court papers. You cannot. Come on now. It's everybody's business if it's the court papers. Now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the funny thing is, is. I just, the video, if you're ever going to do, if you're facing backlash, if you're facing court, just don't do the video at your house with the angle up to the ceiling like this, talking talking to the to the people. It's not going to translate well. Whatever I'm doing in my bedroom is my damn business. Are you gay, bro? Is this what you want to talk about? No, I don't want to talk about that, bro. So then why are we talking about Because that? you went viral off of that, bro. I so the thing viral for a lot of things. And, and I want to talk about that, too. And what my, what I do in my personal life is nobody for Thank you. Business. Well, do you think it, this you is know. why Kobe just um, punked him when he used to play with Kobe? Kobe, Kobe knew he was like, hey, you know what I mean? That's an allegation. But Kobe definitely punked him hard. He never was the same after that. Definitely he not. He was never the same after Kobe. No, no. Kobe's put a, a dent in his mental capacity. <laughs> <That's what laughs> he turned him to a mumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Cloud babies, I love it. It's crazy. Look, I will say this, right? Mm -hmm. Each the wrong. Look, there must be other NBA players that have their tendencies. And look, you know, you have everybody all, get there. Everybody has their crazy thought, stuff yeah. that they do in the bed. That's what, and that's what he's saying. Shout right? out so to uh, Death. In that respect, it is it. his business. It is yeah. his own thing. Like, who are we to judge him for what doing that kind mm -hmm. of stuff? But it is just funny no, when it turns to his soul. Yeah, once it imprisonment. Turns to, exactly. Once it hits battery, the it's, it's our business. Now sir. it's our business. Yes. And now we can talk about it. Yes. With a little bit of more of a you know moral standing ground. A lot of people have been saying he's sus for years. Yeah. I including heard. including your boy you was talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, Anthony Davis. Oh, boy. you know what I mean? There's videos and little, you know what I mean? Yeah. Little, 
I mean, pause I saw, moment. Yeah, you see it because you know, especially when the when the young guys are rookies, I think they mm-hmm. get they get made to do they some wild yeah. stuff. You they know, like. And but I thought I saw a video of Anthony Davis back in the day doing some of that, being a rookie, and mm. he's like on the ground, butt ass naked, and they're like, I love. He's like, I love it, and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen, but also it was the biggest pause moment ever, like of all time. I never baby, saw, like, what are we doing? I never saw the brow the same after that. To be honest, he shaved it off. He sh- you know what I mean? He shaved it. I didn't know he shaved it. He went L.A. full. Nah, he didn't shave it. So, do you see old Anthony Davis and new Anthony Davis? Oh, he, no, it's he, a whole different space. There's a gap right there. He went to Gap. He went shopping. He didn't get me. the Gap. No, you know what he did? He got the he got the manicured up. He got it he lined waxed up. Waxed it. No, he went to the bar. He got the lined up. It's not uni anymore, son. There's no, no uni. He's got the line up. He got a fade. He got a fade coming that way. I'm <laughs> telling you. Yo, nice. Your unibrow is not unified, son. Do. Don't trust him. <laughs> 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 no, Yo, let's move on, son. Um, you, you know, know you fuck me out to everybody you go and meet with that you're not gay. And they have to hide. According to court documents Shout out to um, from Radar Online, I'm Joe Stone. Howard admits to inviting Stephen Harper to have sex with him. Imagine, you're getting ready for a hot and steamy hookup with the rich and famous athlete. It's late at night, it's about to be a sneaky link, and you're excited. But when you get over there, instead of sparks flying and you having the time of your life with the superstar that slid in your Instagram DMs, you are forced into a threesome with a transgender woman that you didn't agree to. And then, your fantasy becomes a nightmare as the six Team championship winning basketball player who's built like a superhero decides that you are going to do whatever he says and no isn't an option. They gonna have each other. Somebody's gonna have to give us some boot. And it's just as simple. <laughs> but this is the alleged Dwight Howard story as told by the man who was now accusing him of sexual assault. Screenshots of their conversation were submitted as evidence with Dwight Howard saying stuff like, yes, I'm into freaky stuff. Now I want you to know I'm not gay or anything. I'm just a little nasty sometimes. I don't want to offend you. And the entire story about how this is all unfolded is insane. And now Dwight Howard has confirmed parts of it. Well, the part about him being gay. But other than that, he says that it went down totally differently. Of course. Howard has denied assaulting Harper. He says everything that went down was 100% consensual. The problem with that is that this isn't the first man to accuse Dwight Howard of being gay and doing some shady stuff. As his alleged ex-boyfriend came forward to expose him in the past for That's allegedly wow. threatening him after they broke up. And why did they break up? Because Dwight allegedly had an affair with a trans sex worker named Kitty. The same Kitty that was allegedly a part of this surprise threesome that battling these allegations all over the internet and back then Dwight denied everything including being homosexual so now people are confused because we know he was lying about that but is he lying about this everybody touches the ball right but remember everything said here is alleged and like always we here at the church of Joe Stone don't judge we just tell the story better than anyone else and we let you decide if Dwight Howard has problems with consent or if the multiple people who have accused Dwight Howard of playing by prison rules are telling the truth but let's get to the the story. Now, exactly what's going on, what do we know, and what is the truth? Well, after years of speculation about his sexuality, the truth about Dwight Howard is finally coming to light. As another man comes forward and accuses the former NBA player of assault and a threesome going wrong, and yeah, it's bringing all of his stuff that's in the closet out of it. You see, Crazy. rumors about Dwight being gay have been around for a long time, and he's always denied it. And we here don't judge, and it's okay if he wants to live in or out of the closet, but the problem is this is the first time he's being accused of something far more serious, and it's forced him to come clean about his sexual preferences in court. You see, Dwight was outed after a male model named Stephen Harper filed a lawsuit, accusing the NBA player of forcing him to engage in a threesome against his will back in 2021. In the lawsuit, Harper claims that Howard and a second man, or transgender woman, forced him to engage in a threesome against his will at the basketball player's Atlanta area home. And the lawsuit gives us a lot of details. See, it states that the two men met virtually in May 2021 through Instagram when Dwight Howard DM'd him. And again, Dwight Howard confirms this. And of course, we have the text messages, but yeah. They later arranged to meet through text messages and some of the messages were included in the lawsuit and they are pretty goddamn freaky. I'm gonna be honest with you. He's asking for all types of pictures and videos and he's getting asked to get the DMs with this man and he is definitely the aggressor. But then on the night of July 19th, 2021, Harper went to Dwight's home for a one-on-one hookup. But while he was already on the way, Dwight proposed that they make it a threesome. Hey, would you like to have another person 
in the room? Doc Harper says he declines, but in the text messages shared in the lawsuit, the two are discussing it, but he never actually says no to the proposal in those messages. In them, Dwight says, allegedly, you want to have a threesome? Harper responds with who and is that what you want? Dwight says, a dude laugh out loud or a girl laugh out loud, and now we know he was laughing because it was a little bit of both, according to him. But they can't come till after four. Harper then responded saying he was 30 minutes away. Now fast forward, and Harper says that when he arrived, Dwight was alone, although his son was sleeping in his bedroom. Come on, guys. They then went to Dwight's bedroom where they got undressed and, well, they kissed while watching television, according to Harper. However, Dwight was texting someone the entire time, and after about 45 minutes, according to Harper, he excused himself, and when he returned, he was accompanied by a third man. Or, again, he was accompanied by a transgender woman, Kitty St. Coffer, who was presenting as a woman. Now, apparently, this is where Dwight told Harper that this is something that he and Kitty do all the time and that they wanted to have one with him. Harper says, though, that he continued to turn down that offer and that he didn't want to do it but felt pressured and threatened by physical harm if he didn't agree. Meaning that he felt like this 6'10 football player who's built, again, like a damn superhero. Terminator, and nigga. wasn't okay with him saying no. Because he claims that Dwight started to get angry when he said no and told him that he was going to do whatever he told him to do. And that's when the basketball player and his accomplice allegedly forced Harper to engage in these acts against his will. Which included him having to put his mouth on places where he didn't want to put his mouth. Now it gets worse because after their assault, Harper claims that Dwight refused to let him leave on his own in an Uber and insisted that Kitty drive him home. So he is now suing Dwight for assault and battery, false imprisonment, and intentional infliction. Dang, is on an NDA? Now, people are going to always ask the same old question. Why didn't Harper go to the police? Well, apparently, a year after the incident happened, Harper filed a report with the Gwinnett Police Department. Although the case was dropped after he failed to show up for the in-person questioning. But the allegations in the criminal case are identical to the ones he is now mentioning in the lawsuit. With all the evidence being presented, Presented, Dwight has been forced to come forward and admit to having this encounter with Stephen Harper, saying that, yes, this happened. However, he claims that it was all consensual and that the alleged victim knew all about the threesome before it happened. He is fighting the lawsuit on the grounds that Harper is lying about what really happened for personal but I don't care, that post in background a lot. Wow, yeah, although Dwight denies certain parts of the lawsuit on a legal basis, he basically confirms the entire story that Harper tells, how they met, the nature of their conversations. So at this point, I mean, he's saying he did 90% of what happened, just not the whole 100. But the crazy part is allegedly Dwight admitted that he stopped when he saw that Harper didn't like what was going on. And that's how the encounter ended. That's from Dwight Howard. Allegedly. So it sounds like he wasn't into it and you knew it and that's why you stopped. But okay. Now, Dwight Howard posted on social media where he addressed these rumors and basically confirmed the accusations. This time he did not try to deny it, but instead questioned why everyone was all of a sudden so concerned about who he spends his time with. But bro, that's not what happened. People were concerned about who you spend your time with. They were concerned that you try to take someone's sanctity without <laughs> asking. That's what they were concerned about. Mind your business. That's the problem with y'all people. Y'all worried about who people spend their time with. Whatever I'm doing in my bedroom. That nigga look rough in this my damn video. business. Whatever you doing in your bedroom that nigga is, stressing. is your damn business. That ain't for everybody. And everybody don't need to know. You ain't got to say anything about what you're doing in your fucking house. It's your house. You ain't got to explain that to nobody. And yes, it's true that whatever he does in his bedroom does not matter. And it should be of no concern of anyone else. And we are not here to gay bash or shame Dwight in any way for his sexual preference. Whether he wants to lie about it or not. And I don't think that that's anyone's place to judge. But it does matter if what you're doing in the bedroom is potentially illegal. Especially if it affects your actual career. You see, Dwight's final season with the NBA was with the Lakers in 2021 to 2022. Since then, he's gone overseas to play with the Taiwanese-based team from the Toy John Leopard. I probably said it wrong, but since news of this broke, many have speculated that the NBA knew about this ahead of time, and that's probably why he didn't get picked up by any teams, although he's a former All-Star and championship winner. And Stephen A. Smith even alluded to that, claiming that the pending assault and battery allegations likely scared teams away. Or Dwight Howard is in the wrong is in the news for the wrong reasons right now. And it states NBA star Dwight Howard has denied sex assaulting a man. His name is Stephen Harper. Howard said he exchanged text messages with Harper, which included sex explicit content, such as photographs and videos. Lord have mercy, hold on, let me just pause. One, Howard admitted that they went to his room, took off their clothes, and kissed consensually. 
But Harper then claims Howard surprised her by introducing him to a man dressed as a woman. Harper said the man called himself Kitty. He began performing oral that on the White Howard. And I ain't I can't no do damn this, way in it. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. And if we're being honest, Dwight's last season with the Lakers was not exactly impressive. He averaged career lows in points and rebounds. That, combined with a year off and rumors of pending assault allegations, likely made it risky for teams who were thinking of signing the 37-year-old anyway. Now, hilariously enough, former rapper Mace reacted to Dwight's response to the allegations on a recent episode of It Is What It Is talk show with Cameron, and he shot down the idea that it doesn't matter as well, saying pretty much the same thing that Stephen A. said. It does matter. It does matter. That... Those are the lies that are going on in society. We tell people it don't matter, but behind your back, it matters. Yo. And that's what we got to first oh, start man. off by saying. Like, it, you hear you hear stats saying this, because what people do in their bedroom, that's between them. <laughs> Not necessarily true, but I understand. I understand. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Because you telling them it don't matter. But then it does matter. And anybody watching this knows it does matter. Even to people that participate, it matters. Because people will say, oh, it don't matter. And as soon as they find out, they out, they're out in them, so it matters. You know, and when it comes down to making money off the story, it matters. When it comes down to who dating you, is going to matter. When it comes down to it, we go, look at Cam. But it's good to care on Cam. When it comes down to if you're going to be in the locker room with them, it matters. Because there's about 30 teams that did not sign Dwight Howard because it matters. And again, it wasn't consensual with, you know, it's kind of really the problem here. Is that is consensual. It's never consensual if you surprise somebody. And um, I don't be meaning to laugh. Sometimes I make myself laugh, but it's not funny. But it is funny. Stupid, Yo, he said it's consensual. <laughs> so just, uh, just think. You're somewhere. You're with somebody. And somebody walk out of the side door with a leprechaun outfit on. It's not longer consensual. But that's crazy. But remember I told you that there was more to this story. And in the past, there had been other allegations that may, at this point, influence what we're hearing now. Because in 2018, a gay man and published author named Massine Elige, I'm probably saying that wrong, but Massine claimed that he had been in a relationship with Dwight, but things took a dark turn. Apparently, he decided to conform with what happened to him after he claims he was sexually harassed and manipulated by Dwight, as well as threatened by his pastor. And in a series of tweets and screenshots, Grabs, he explained exactly what happened and he claimed that they had met on the set of Wild and Out and then Dwight slid into his DMs. Accused Dwight Howard of a relationship and I felt like they met at Wild and Out. Out. I like, guess she was there <laughs> and then they played the clip. We started talking. Yeah, I take that out. Escalated the for, you know, sending pictures back and forth of the sexy type and chatting every night. He even went as far at that time to share DMs from Dwight, share voice messages to back up the story, but apparently they even ended up hanging out eventually and also were dating until my scene found out that Dwight had a special somebody who was this mysterious kitty who wasn't just another man but a transgender sex worker but a transgender lady of the night who Dwight loved to spend time with and that they also had these wild parties of sexy time nature that Dwight was also known to attend. So yeah, basically my guy my scene didn't know that Dwight Howard liked to get freaky freaky. But scene apparently broke things off but it didn't stop there. He claims that he started receiving calls from a private number claiming to be Dwight but it actually was his pastor and the person on the other line began threatening him over an unsigned NDA and tried to intimidate him into taking hush money to keep quiet about the relationship. My scene eventually filed a similar lawsuit against Dwight and the pastor over the alleged harassment and tried to report it to the police but was ignored because 
of how influential allegedly Dwight is in the city. And again, at this time, he lied about all of it. Made it seem like my scene was completely crazy when the truth is, is that it probably sounds like he did date him. And now, when you look at the story that's happening now, it makes Dwight look even less truthful because now he's saying that he is homosexual. But this man is lying about his story. And people are just wondering if this is going to be the second gay man that he lies on. But with all the rumors circulating online about his sexuality, Dwight was forced to come out and make a statement. He denied the claims at that time again and said the lawsuit was nothing more than a money grab the same way he's saying now about this new one. He even did an interview where he sat down and told the world that he wasn't gay and that he had never met my scene, which again sounds highly unlikely now. You know a guy who said uh, it ended up being a situation that was it went viral. People were talking about it and it, it upset me because I didn't even know who the person was. And I'm like, why was somebody who I've never met, never had any contact with, make up a whole story about me? And I saw all the hate, the pure hate from people that I've never met before just pile up everywhere I went against me. And I think that liberated me um, because I saw how a lot of people would feel, whether they're, they're gay, whether they're straight, whether they have issues. People are afraid to be who they are. They're afraid to just step out and be, like you said, um, because they're afraid of what other people might say or think about them. And so that situation right. made me realize... You're a poo -poo boy, man. You're not like this. But just be you. Be free. And see, this is the thing. At that time, even though people believed the rumors, still pretty... The consensus was that pretty much Dwight was telling the truth and that he wasn't lying. And people pretty much chose to believe Dwight over this person with the smaller platform. But to be honest, Messine had also made similar accusations about being in a relationship with a rapper named Playboy Cardi, which many on the internet believe were made up, so... He Hell, nah, he probably was. Playboy, Playboy Cardi gay anyway, as fuck. Anyway, so it did kind of help... Playboy, Playboy Cardi gay as fuck. Dwight. He but probably did. Thing. Dwight has five children with five different women and it was even once married to WNBA star Tia Cooper but now that his past is coming to light even one of his baby mamas has came out against him and accused the basketball player of some shocking things you see Royce Reed is a former Orlando Magic cheerleader and the mother of Dwight's oldest son Braylon the two don't have the best relationship but after the basketball player famously won a defamation lawsuit against her in 2010 you see she had been trashing him on the internet and claimed that he beat their son so Dwight filed a defamation lawsuit and one that forced her to pay him five hundred dollars every time she says something negative about him in public. Hey, a plus lawyer Dwight, I give you props for that one. She then filed a counter suit that accused him of child neglect for beating Braylon. He then admitted to using the bill to discipline his son, but the court did not choose to file any charges against him. But things took a turn over ten years later in 2021 after Braylon, his son, was accused of inappropriately touching a younger child, the son of Royce then boyfriend. After an investigation, the court ordered Royce to keep her son away from the children younger than him by two years, including the boyfriend's son. However, Braylon continued hanging out with the child, which was discovered by his therapist who reported the incident to DCF. Royce was then charged with third-degree child neglect for failing to abide by the court's orders. Yes, this is bad. And again, this is Dwight's son. See, Royce is now coming forward to claim that Dwight was really the one responsible for his son's inappropriate behavior, which, I'll be honest, sounds Miss like a going as far as calling him evil. Now, Dwight recently posted a video of him motivating his children in the gym, trying to help them build mental strength and endurance and that didn't go too well with the internet. And of course, that seemed to trigger Royce where she posted on Instagram that he was pretending to be a parent for one day out of the 365 for the camera. You see, a message was reposted by the shade room and Royce ended up in the comment section where she made all kinds of wild claims about the father of her child. First, she called him evil, then said something crazy that I can't even repeat. She then also accused him of forcing her to sign an NDA so she could take on a role of matriarch of his many polyamorous relationships. She then allegedly says that he pays people to start smear campaigns against the mothers of his children. Finally, she also claimed that the situation with Braylon and the minor actually happened under his supervision. So yes, Dwight has had it tough and it seems like he's under fire from every way possible. And it seems like, well, maybe he's not guilty of everything but there seems to be some smoke and some fire and because of the way he's lived his life it's all coming out in the messiest way possible because he just wasn't honest from the beginning. Or at least he didn't know how to move and probably should have people sign NDAs before he does things with them, not after. But again, there are two sides to every story and we don't judge you tell us what you think about all of this so yes while there are two sides of the story when you look at all the accusations and all the information against the basketball player it's safe to say that something 
something is strange is going on with Dwight Howard. And it seems like this may be the end of his career as we know it. Now, whether his wealth and celebrity status will allow him to escape without any consequences, once again, it's hard to say. But at least when it comes to his, you know, him being in the closet, well, that's out now. So congratulations. We should celebrate that. But again, let us know what you think in the comments. I am Joe Stone, and this is the Church Shout of Joe out. Stone Podcast. Shout out Joe I bet. So, yeah, man. Dwight Howard, you know, he wanted to come back to the league. He did. And I believe that he could play basketball. You know what I'm saying? He only thirty. He was only 37 at that time. He built more muscular and he got more energy than half these niggas who playing in the NBA these days. You know what I'm saying? But the allegations are tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, the NBA and the football just didn't like these niggas being gay um, in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess Caleb, that nigga Caleb, and done switched it up and started being gay and painting his fingernails, done changed the game up. They used to like let niggas come in the league being gay and, and being in the in in locker room being by gay niggas. To, be, to me, it's my God's honest opinion. I don't feel comfortable being around gay niggas um, changing. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I don't like being around niggas at all changing. That's facts, nigga. I like to be by myself changing. I don't like being around no nigga changing, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, during, you know, basketball and shit, you know, these niggas be like on some brotherhood shit. And, you know, they be all, like, you know, when I used to be in football and shit, you know, you had to do, you had to take showers. And I never, I never even take a shower with the niggas. But they took showers. You had to change your, in and out your clothes. You know what I'm saying? Niggas are weird. You know what I'm saying? You never know what these niggas be thinking, man. And you gotta, you gotta understand, man, it's not just the white who get caught up with these allegations of being gay. It's a lot of niggas who are in the league who are just on some foo foo shit. But they just don't get caught with it, you know what I'm saying? And if they do get caught with it, it's about time, it's about when they out the league. You know what I'm saying? Like the White Howard, he wants to play a little bit more. He in, he in fucking Hong Kong playing motherfucking with the Shanghai Sharks, putting up 70, 80, and 4. Nigga, nigga going crazy on that bitch. You know what I'm saying? So it just show you, man, he got a lot left to prove to himself. But it's just like, I think the NBA was not having that shit. You know what I'm saying? They get, they take a lot of shit being racist. Gambling, um, all types of weird shit. You know what I'm saying? But once you start doing shit like that, man, they might they 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 gonna start acting up. You know what I'm saying? And the White Howard, man, I think they just made an example out of the White Howard, man. You know, like you know, they gotta make an example out of somebody. So they did it out of the White Howard. They like, hey, you on that foo foo shit? And you got rape allegations on your ass, nigga? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Shaq was talking about the situation, man. Damn reason I like to talk about Shaq, man. Cause when he was talking about um. Kanye and, the, and how we the Jews, and he didn't want nobody to know that we the Jews. Shaq, please stop. You know what I'm saying? You the one who holding us back these 50, 10 years, nigga, so you can have these millions of dollars, so you can be the white man's puppet. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you feel me? I, it's just like I, I support your basketball and your mindset on some of the basketball cues, but when you talk about the Jews and shit, nigga, leave that shit alone, nigga. You're not part of that shit, nigga. You're not speaking up. You want the niggas to keep us as slaves. You want the niggas to have they hand us in their hands using us while they give you the money on. That's what you want, huh? Come on, don't don't wake them up. Then we gonna fight Kanye. Boy, you crazy, nigga. You know what I'm saying? It just shows you people, people change, man, once they get a little bit of money on the power, man. As sad for the white heart, man, because everybody knows it. You know what I'm saying? You know it's tough when you on every damn interview podcast, they they gotta ask you, are you gay? So I we heard this gay allegations. Are you gay? So did you do any gay teams? Are you really this gay or is that gay? You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of hard, you know what I'm saying, to have a, a good mindset and a mind frame when niggas are keep on coming at you with some allegations that, you know, now we look at it, man, I'm thinking that, you know, that not the rape allegations, but the gay allegations, he might be gay. You know what I'm saying? With the, with the text messages, and he told me he wants to see somebody meet. He missing transgender girls. Somebody, he, wear, he wearing pink dresses. Man, y'all gotta understand. The, origin, the originators of all this gay shit is these white people, man. These niggas, these white people are just naturally gay. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, when it used to be slavery, man, these white people, man, they was fucking each other. You know what I'm saying? They was already fucking each other. They got us 
and they start making us fuck each other paws, you know what I'm saying, with niggas and shit. And they used to demasculate us and fuck the, the slave in front, of this, in front of the slave people, the kids and the, and the women, to so demoralize the group. You know what I'm saying? Piss on niggas and shit. So these white people, they, they always been gay. They, that's where gay come from, is these white people. They naturally gay. You know what I'm saying? They, they brought that toxic shit into our community. And now, you know, motherfuckers are thinking, oh yeah, I'm gay, I'm gay, because God made me gay. No, no, fuck, he did not make you gay, nigga. That's a choice, nigga. I don't care how you talk about it, how you feel about it. Who knows how you turn gay? You could be in your mama's stomach, nigga, and some, you know what I'm saying? And some gay shit happen. You never know, nigga. Kid, babies learn about that gay shit at an early age, man. Niggas don't be turning, niggas not born gay, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, the, 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 the spirit comes in motherfuckers to be gay. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's sad because some of these motherfuckers do be getting raped and turn out to be gay. You know what I'm saying? I feel bad for the niggas who got raped as a young kid and turn out to be gay eventually and their whole life is all fucked up because some over a, a, a childhood moment or they got raped at when they got a little bit older, when they got into adult age. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like I said, the White Howard raped that nigga. You know what I'm saying? The White Howard is a big ass motherfucker. That nigga... Almost every bit of seven seven feet, almost 280 per muscle. You know what I'm saying? Imagine the White Howard grab your ass, bring your ass on the shirt, grab, threw your ass in that fucking seat, and you sitting there like this, like, <gasps> you sitting there on this seat, like, looking up and shit, like this big ass muscle ass nigga, pause, trying to, you know what I'm saying? You never fucking know, man. This world, what you think that could not happen in a million years could happen. What you think that wouldn't, what you think wouldn't happen, in a million years, wouldn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, what you think that couldn't happen in a million years would happen. What you think that would happen in a million years would not happen. Like, niggas standing on business, you think a nigga wouldn't rap in a million years? And he might, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, you know, the world is so fucking flip-flop, upside down. The world, man, is, is, is all over the place, man. You can't take what you can off the face value anymore. You can't, like, it's just motherfuckers, man. You think that the motherfucker wouldn't do it? Nine times out of ten, you never know, man. This world is a wicked motherfucking world, man. You just got to stay praying up out your man, and keep your morals, man. Because I always say this, man, it's not about being gay, but it's about when you get into that situation when they be like, what would you do for $50 million? Would you suck this dick for $50 million? Would you eat that nigga ass for $50 million? Would you get poked in your fucking booty for $30 million, $80 million? You know what I'm saying? So it's morals at the end of the day. Niggas will switch up and they start selling you out, your kids out, your family, your whole hood out to the white people and everything. You just gotta understand that this world is a wicked ass place, man. So you gotta always stay hey, on guard, stay woke, and always with you, man, because you never know when they could be praying on you and you could be next, you know what I'm saying? So always be on the lookout and watch for anything that could happen in this world, man. So hope y'all enjoyed the video. I'm out to the hood and outside. Crip. Gang. Hey, Dad, you know what I want. We need to talk about this shit. Be legendary. You know this is instrumental. You the engineer on it, so. Hold that everywhere.